Hello everybody, it's Webby. Welcome to another video. Today we're looking at the brand new BMW iX1. This is a fully electric version of the brand new X1 that came out this year in 2023. Today we're going to have a full look around the vehicle, plus take it for a drive to see what it's like out on the open road. So the big thing about this car is it's fully electric. Under the bonnet, we've got a 67 kilowatt battery, uh, run by two synchronous motors. Develops 230 kilowatt and 494 new meters of torque. And BMW claims got a range of 400 kilometers. In terms of charging, it'll do a maximum of 22 kilowatts from an AC source. Or if you go on in the fast chargers, it'll actually go up to 130 kilowatt. So that means you could actually potentially charge the car in roughly half an hour. But if you haven't got a fast charger at home, it only charges at two kilowatts, which takes a very long time approximately 33 hours so if you've got plenty of time on your hands don't buy yourself a fast charger but if you want to get your car charged overnight buy a fast charger um, even if you get a seven kilowatt charger it just means overnight you can fully charge the battery so it's ready for the next day in the week that i've been driving this car a full charge according to the uh, little display in front of the driver has told me i'm going to get roughly 360 kilometers for a full charge which I don't think is actually too bad because for a lot of people, they're not going to do that many kilometers in, uh, in a week. You know, that's going to equate to somewhere around 18,000 kilometers a year, I think from my maths, I think that's about right. But yeah, somewhere around there, um, which for a lot of people, they're not going to do that sort of mileage anyway. So, you know, 360 kilometers from a full charge isn't too bad. And it's nice to see there's actually more and more public charges becoming available. You just got to make sure you get the right one um, for the type of cable that the, uh, the car comes with. And the good thing that BMW have done is they actually give you three years complimentary charging from the ChargeFox network. So you basically get a little RFID card, you tap it on a little machine when you go to the charging station, and it doesn't actually cost you anything, which is fantastic for the first three years. Um, after that, you obviously have to get yourself a subscription um, and pay accordingly to whatever the latest charges are. So let's have a look around the car. I can point out some of the features, tell you how much this thing actually costs, um, and then we'll go for a little drive. So the car we're looking at today is a fairly basic specification that BMW Australia lent me for the week. It's called an X-Line model, so it hasn't got too many fancy packages. The only one it has got is what's called an enhancement package. But that's great because it gives you things like metallic paint, which you're gonna probably want anyway. You get a great panoramic sunroof, you get an upgraded Harman Kardon sound system, and you get some active sports seats, which are electric, plus you've got a massage function as well. These are features we'll have a look at a bit more when we get inside the car. So the color of this particular one is called San Remo Green, which on a day like today, which is a bit overcast, looks really, really dark. But when you get a nice sunny day, it actually changes color and it looks quite bright. So it's one of these sort of colors that looks different depending on how you're looking at it or what the weather's like. Um, so it's actually quite a nice color. Um, it reminds me, sort of now, a little bit like British racing green, like a dark green. Um, but like I say, when the sun hits it, it gets really bright because it sparkles and looks fantastic. Um, so this is why they call it X-Line specification. You can also get an M Sport package as well. Um, but like I say, this is a fairly lightly specced car. Pricing for this starts at $84,900 plus on road costs. And that enhancement package I mentioned earlier is $4,700, uh, which actually is pretty good value because you're going to want metallic paint and a sunroof anyway. So yeah, why not have the pack and just get this extra sound system and the night seats as well. So we start off with things like LED headlights. Uh, we get nice 19 inch alloy wheels, which have specific tires as well. Um, BMW put hand cooked tires like these sort of economy tires to try and maximize efficiency for the vehicle. So looking at the iX1 from a side profile, and to me it actually sits fairly low for an SUV, um, it's BMW's smallest of the sort of practical SUVs, if you like, because you can get sort of like the coupe style looking ones with the sloping back. Um, but this has got the more sort of traditional vertical tailgate. Um, but from the side, I think it's a really good looking car. You can tell this is the iX line. We've got the little bits of chrome around the windows where the M Sport gets like the black shadow line. Uh, we've got the little sort of silver accents down the bottoms of the door as well. Um, they've gone for these sort of flush door handles as well. Uh, which have been appearing in things like the 4 Series uh, that we looked at previously earlier in the year. Uh, we've also got these sort of satin silver door caps as well. 
uh, and also the chrome roof rails uh, just to sort of add a bit more touch of chrome to the uh, the window surrounds but coming to the back of the ix1 and i actually think this is one of the nicer sort of views from the car the back of the car looks like any other bmw um in sort of their x range if you like is sort of a very stylish looking car the silver trims from the side of the car continue around the lower part of the bumper uh, we've got the x drive 30 badging there um, and it's a standard ix1 so i was into that so this is the electric version the tailgate itself is electric as you'd imagine in a car of this sort of money and opens up to a fairly decent 490 litres of carrying capacity there's also a little bit of storage under the boot floor where you can try, uh, store your, your charging cables um, and talking of cables bmw actually provides you with two you've got the standard one for plugging into your standard plug socket inside your garage at home that's the one that takes forever to charge then you also get the ones we can use at a public charging station um, so it's nice that bmw actually give you both cables because they're not actually cheap to go and buy if you look on various different websites they're actually quite expensive to buy the cables um, now with most cars the seats can fold down it's got a 40 20 40 split and that's different because that little middle section in the middle and you can fold down so if you get some longer items that you want to put through that you've been down to bunnings or something um, and still carry two people in the back so let's have a look at how much luggage space you actually got by folding down the back seats we we'll simply take out the parcel shelf just an absolute doddle and then fold the seats down so as you can see you've got acres of space in the back there so if you only got two people in the car you can actually load up really really well and get loads and loads of stuff in there now if you're enjoying this review and want to see more videos from me don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because that will tell you the next time a new video comes out and there is some exciting stuff coming for the rest of the year including the brand new bmw m3 touring and also the brand new bmw m2 two cars which i'm really really excited about plus there's loads of other stuff there's going to be the new Mustang Mach-E, there's going to be the new Mustang coming out soon, uh, plus also the Ford F-150. So loads and loads of stuff coming for the rest of the year to get really excited about. Anyway, let's have a look inside this new BMW iX1 and see what the interior is all about. Right, so let's go inside this iX1 then. Uh, keyless entry, as you would expect, on a form of BMW. Uh, and then we've got an interior called Mocha. Uh, so it's like a dark chocolate brown colour. Uh, I actually quite like it. It's a little bit different than the normal black uh, that you'd see on most cars these days. And um, I think it's actually sort of quite like, contemporary, is that the word? Uh, fashionable, whatever you want to call it. Uh, either way, it's really, really nice. That uh, mocha colour also comes onto the door trims as well. Uh, where, so you've got the armrest section there. You've got some nice little bits of stitching. We've also got some nice, uh, I think it's called eucalyptus open pore wood, uh, which goes with the rest of their interior actually it sort of suits it really well then you've got some more sort of chrome accents on the door handles which look really nice uh, and then that's the Harman Kardon sound system which is part of that enhancement package that I mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, also got a nice bit of storage down here in the door as well a uh, bit of space just down there that you can see plenty of room for drinks bottles uh, then we've also got a button to open the electric tailgate the seats themselves, as I mentioned earlier, are part of the enhancement package. Uh, it's these sport seats. So we've got nice bolstering down the sides. Uh, so plenty of support there as well. It's also got the section at the front, which actually extends. There's a little handle underneath. So if you've got long legs, you can actually extend that front section as well. Uh, they're fully electric. Uh, so we've got the normal sort of electric buttons there, plus lumbar support, which is nice. Uh, and also two position memories. Uh, so if there's a couple of different height drivers driving the car you can store your memory positions there as well so let's actually get inside and uh, have a bit of a look at the cabin uh, and see what this is all about and before we actually get in i want to also show you something which is quite cool you've got this sort of floating armrest design you've got your traditional sort of armrest up here uh, on top you've got some of the controls like your gear stick and volume and bits and pieces but underneath there's this nice sort of storage area and they actually get quite a lot of stuff in there uh, it's a decent amount of space uh, but let's jump in the car anyway and have a look around so this is the view from the driver's seat then uh, we've got this nice bmw steering wheel again more chrome accents 
uh, down the sides there. Buttons on the left hand side for your adaptive cruise control. Uh, and then ones over this side which operate uh, things like sort of your music, your head up display and obviously your phone calls. In front of the driver, uh, actually if you look at it from this angle here, it's one piece of glass for the driver's display and also the infotainment screen as well. Um, I'd hate to have to replace that, that would be very very expensive if it broke, um, either way. Um, but yeah, digital display there in front of the driver. Uh, let me just bring this into life and you can see what it looks like. Um, so down here on this armrest that we were looking at a minute ago um, is actually where you find the start stop button. So, so instead of it being kind of near the steering wheel on the dashboard, it's just down here. So you foot on the brake and we literally just press that and then the car comes to life with that nice little sort of welcome sound. So it's like a traditional sort of BMW display that you find on 3 Series or something like that. Um, but the only sort of slight difference being that either over there on the right hand side, it shows you how much power you're using uh, from the battery or down the bottom where you've got the little blue um, sort of arrows, that goes into the regeneration section. So when you're actually braking or decelerating, the little line goes down the bottom to show you how much power you're putting back into the battery, uh, which is actually quite cool and it's a bit of a game you can play with yourself if you want to. Um, now what you can see here, bottom left hand corner of the screen, I've currently got 90% worth of battery charge. Uh, which is showing 335 kilometers of range, uh, so not too bad. Um, coming over to the infotainment screen, um, typical BMW, a lot of it is quite complicated, as you can see here. Uh, I've been looking at some of the menus to set up some of the sort of functions around the car. Uh, if you go to the home screen, you've got these tiles, because this is the latest version uh, of iDrive. And you've got all these tiles which you configure where you can sort of pick and choose what you want to put in there so you can add more widgets. Uh, you've also got wireless Apple CarPlay uh, and Android Auto, but that is white. You do have to plug that one in. Uh, so for us iPhone users, wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, everything is on the screen. There's kind of no buttons down here on the dashboard. Uh, so if you want to access things like your climate control, you have to press that little button in the middle there. And then that brings up all your climate settings, plus also heated seats for driver and passenger. Now I don't mind things being digital, but I do like buttons. I don't, yeah, I don't mind the wood. The wood's really nice, but I do like having some buttons across here. But I hate having to keep going into menus to try and find everything. It's a bit of a bind, to be honest. Um, but probably a minor gripe, depending on how often you're going to change things. Uh, now down below that. Just under here, we've got a wireless phone charger uh, with this little door that kind of stops your phone from moving around too much. Uh, we've got a couple of cup holders there, and as you can see, you can fit a decent sized bottle in there. Slightly hidden away, uh, we've got a couple of USB-C, so the faster charging USB points. Uh, then over this side, we've got a 12 volt socket as well, uh, which seems a bit old fashioned these days, but never mind. Um, coming on to the top of this sort of center panel. And so we have the start stop button. This is actually your gear lever. So you literally, uh, it sort of rocks backwards and forwards. So it tells you we're in park at the moment. Uh, if I put my foot in the brake, you literally pull the lever back and then that's in drive. You push it forward, it goes into reverse. And then obviously the rear camera comes up as well. So that's quite nice. Uh, then behind that, we've got the electric parking brake, which has also got an auto hold function. Uh, we've then got, if you press that button there, that brings up the driver settings. So this is where you can change um, like your drive modes um, and chassis and charging bits and pieces as well. Plus also your driver assistance, so your safety stuff. Then you've got a button there which is my mode. So this is your driving modes. Uh, we also down here got a volume button. Uh, you've got a button there to turn your cameras on and off and your hazards. Uh, and then the backwards and forwards, you can adjust sort of tracks on your, your playlist for your music. Uh, this section here, also got a little hidden storage compartment under here. So if you press this button, it flips up the opposite way, bizarrely, and uh, not towards the driver. But there's a little bit of storage space under there. You can keep keys and bits and pieces like that. Um, so yeah, another bit of storage, which is quite nice. Uh, as far as storage goes, we've then also got a fairly decent sized glove box there in front of the passenger. And so this wood 
carries all the way across the front. Uh, here's called Eucalyptus uh, from the BMW uh, spec sheet they sent me. Plus also a little bit more chrome just to sort of bring a bit of highlight to the interior. Uh, above we've got some buttons up here. Uh, one of which will open the panoramic sunroof for us. Which actually lets quite a nice lot of light inside the car. Because you've got this black headlining. Uh, or is it brown? It might be brown. Um, either way the stark headlining. So by opening up the sunroof. It lets loads and loads of light into the car. Uh, and makes it a much brighter place to be. So it's sitting in the driver's seat then. Uh, I've adjusted my seat to where I want it to be. Um, as I said these seats are lovely and comfortable. Very supportive. Uh, nice leather steering wheel in front of you. You actually get a great view of the road ahead as well. There's a decent amount of visibility out the front windscreen. Decent side windows as well. Uh, and the amount of light coming in from the sunroof makes it a nice light and airy place to be. So that's set my seat up to where I want it to be. Let's have a look in the back of the car. See how much space is in there and any other features that might benefit rear passengers. Getting into the back of the iX1 is actually pretty easy. The doors open pretty wide, but you just have to mind your head on this section here so you don't whack it when you get in. Um, I'm only five foot six and I still had to stoop down a little bit. Um, the visibility out the back is pretty good. Um, the light coming in from the sunroof is fantastic. It makes it nice and light and airy in the back here. Uh, doesn't feel claustrophobic at all. Still got the little sort of silver trims with the Harman Kardon sound system and the door handle. Uh, the leather carries over onto the rear doors as well, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it feels a nice place to be back here. Decent amount of legroom. I'm sitting behind my driving position. Um, if someone was kind of six foot and had a six foot passenger behind them, then it might be a little bit of a struggle. Uh, you can just about get your feet under the driver's seat, which is quite nice. So you can stretch your legs out a little bit as well. We've got air vents down here in the middle plus two USB-C fast charging points. That's nice to see. So people in the back are well catered for. We've also got the obligatory fold down armrest with a couple of cup holders as well, which is nice to see. If you're gonna be carrying baby seats in the back of the car, the two outer seats have also got the ISOFIX um, mounting points for child seats. Um, so pretty standard fare these days, but it's nice to see these features still there. As I said earlier, you can fold this centre section down. There's a little loop just at the base of the seat, which you pull up, fold that down, and then longer items can come through from the boot. Right, time to take the iX1 for a drive then. Let's go and see what this new BMW is all about. As is the norm, you hear absolutely nothing. It's electric. Um, it's actually really, really nice. I do like electric cars. Um, I'm a petrol head at heart, but I don't, there's just something about driving along in complete silence. It's just very, very relaxing. If anybody out there has, has driven an electric car or owns one, I know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just such a nice, serene experience. You tend to hear more road noise and tyre noise and wind noise when you're in an electric car, but it's a small price to pay for driving around in such a nice peaceful environment and depending on what driving mode you're in on how you set the car up it's almost like driving it with one pedal because as soon as you take your foot off the accelerator it brings in regenerative braking so it actually slows the car down a lot quicker uh, which I actually quite like once you get used to the whole you're not using two pedals it's actually quite easy to drive I think that's probably the easiest way to describe it and yes, that's the sound of an indicator in a BMW. Um, I know predictably, you know, it's a standard joke. BMW drivers don't use their indicators. Um, but in the electric one, you can hear them a lot better. So there's no excuse not to use them. In terms of ride comfort, it doesn't feel too dissimilar to any normal X1 or any other BMW, in fact. They've done a really good job with the suspension um, without making the ride too hard. The only time I find it kind of, you can feel that this is an electric car because obviously you've got the weight of the batteries low down, which is like any electric car, is if you go over like a speed bump and the suspension kind of settling back down um, to its normal sort of setting. 
or if you go over a pothole in the road, it kind of crashes a little bit more. But as a general rule, it's perfectly comfortable. Um, it's no firmer than any other BMW that I've driven. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to drive quite a few. I've currently got the car in efficient mode just because I want to see what the acceleration is like. And it definitely doesn't lack. It would certainly out accelerate any car from a standing stall at the traffic lights or something like that. But it's the mode that's going to give you the best efficiency in the longest range, uh, obviously depending on how you drive the car. Competitors for this car include models from Mercedes, Volvo, plus also the forthcoming Mustang Mach-E as well, because of all similar sized vehicles. As you'd expect, this new AX1 is full of the latest safety equipment, so you've got all your blind spot monitor, your lane keeping, your adaptive cruise, autonomous braking, which is kind of getting pretty standard these days. One thing I do like about this iX1 is its visual appearance. And what I mean by that is it doesn't look like an electric car. It's not like something like a Tesla Model Y or the new Mustang Mach-E that's coming out to Australia later this year. It looks like a regular car. And that's no bad thing because the new X1 is a good looking car. Electric cars are definitely getting more popular here in Australia, helped by models like the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, but more and more mainstream manufacturers are now jumping on the electric bandwagon. And the German manufacturers like Mercedes and BMW are doing a fantastic job because they're putting electrification into a lot of their different models. So you get a choice of either body size or size of vehicle that you want. But for most people, this iX1 be more than enough and the price point is actually really decent too as i mentioned at the beginning of this video this car starts at just under eighty five thousand dollars at the time of filming plus on road costs you can obviously add a few accessory packs or different bits and pieces on if you want to so you can easily get it over a hundred thousand dollars but still not bad value for money i don't think uh, particularly when you've got a bmw badge and you've got the typical quality that you'd find inside every other bmw I've even grown to like the colour combination as well. I don't mind green, um, you know, it's particularly this sort of dark green looks quite sort of classy. And the brown interior, again, don't mind it. Whether I'd choose it if I was buying one myself, I'm not so sure. I'd probably play it a little bit safer. Um, and maybe either black or silver interior with a, uh, I don't know, maybe a dark blue or black on the outside, something like that. Um, but as with normal with BMW, plenty of colour choices on the inside and the outside. I'm not sure if it's picking up much on the sound of the video, but there's not really much noise coming into the cabin in this car, except when you get on a harsher road surface like I've just driven onto now, uh, so I'm not sure whether that's actually making it through to the audio. But very little noise comes into the cabin. If it's a bit windy, you can hear noise from around the wing mirrors and things like that, but you'd find it in a petrol or diesel car. It's just amplified because you can't hear any of the engine. Um, so you hear sort of more outside noises uh, than you would in a petrol or diesel car. So the question I always ask myself when I'm reviewing cars is, if I was looking to buy this type of car, as in an SUV or an electric SUV, would I buy one of these? And I'd have to say yes would be the answer. It feels very BMW. And that's a big compliment because, you know, BMWs have always advertised their car as you know, the ultimate driving machine, or that's what their tagline always used to be. And it is a nice thing to drive. It's got a lovely interior. It's a nice place to be. It's got all the latest tech, all the latest safety equipment, and it's just a really, really nice place to be and a nice car to drive. A decent value for money as well, I think because any BMW can be $100,000 plus dollars these days. Um, so the fact that you get an electric one, because normally electric's more expensive, I think it's actually pretty decent. So in summary, yes, I'd buy one. Not necessarily in green with a brown interior. I would go something different, but you know, personal preferences and all that. So there you go, there's a quick look around the brand new BMW iX1, including my thoughts and opinions on whether I would buy one or not. I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have, please give it a like, 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. As I said earlier, there's going to be plenty more stuff coming throughout the rest of the year. M3 Touring, M2, F150, Mustang Mach-E, new Mustang. Um, so yeah, you definitely need to subscribe and hit the notification bell to find out when those videos are coming out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section for me. I will answer your questions as soon as I can. That just leaves me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.